inspiring lecture, Professor Zalesen. If uh, we design this building after your speech, maybe we can eliminate this too boring color here. <laughs> okay, uh, now we have a question and answer. Please raise your hand, and then uh, if you want to uh, make a question in Bahasa, I will translate it into English. Please? Yes? Uh, probably one by one, yeah? Okay. Uh, good morning, everyone. I come to it just that in designing our architecture works that we have to concern about concept and qualities. But in more formal that where there's chaos and dynamic and more others, I want to ask that how, how can we put a unique design, which is our structure, that ensure user safety? Because I think that most of the main questions that a unique design of structure is that how can we ensure that the users feel safety? Okay. Thank it's you. a very nice question. Well, first of all, um, we may not want the users to feel safe. We might want to challenge them and, make, and, and create excitement. Like, we might want to make the users feel slightly scared because that will create an amazing emotion for them. You know, they will never forget entering your building. And like Toyo Ito, he has a lot of his structure is unstable, but then he creates other structure that makes the whole building stable. And so, for example, you could have very chaotic internal columns like that. But, but then around the perimeter of your building, you could have, like in this direction, you could have two strong shear walls. And in this direction, two strong shear walls or two strong, really strong moment frames. And so your building can be very strong for earthquake, but yet it can have this amazing chaotic quality, you know, within the plan somewhere. So that's how we tend to do it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, any other question? Yes, please. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Jadi uh, ini saya sebenarnya mau tanya tentang ini sebenarnya di studio. Saya dan mungkin orang lain juga ada kesulitan dalam uh, apa ya menggunakan struktur yang ekspresif dan di luar apa ya di luar. Pokoknya dia akan uh, biasanya itu ujung-ujungnya itu ke galok dan kolam lagi, grid lagi gitu. Nah itu uh, terutama uh, terutama itu dalam uh, saat kita terapkan ke fungsionalitas, ke efektivitas, cost, gaya dan hal-hal seperti itu. Uh, Lalu pertanyaannya itu uh, menurut bapak uh, <laughs> apa uh, yang uh, yang yang mana sih yang lebih penting dan uh, gimana cara menabrakkan ke uh, aspek aspek itu uh, lalu ya terutama dalam konteksnya di Indonesia kan uh, negara berkembang uh, kalau bangunannya semakin aneh itu semakin mahal misalnya dan uh, tadi yang berdampak uh, pasal tentang gempa. Yeah, so to translate is quite difficult for me. <coughs> Just, um, One question at a time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Most of the students have uh, uh, difficulties in trying to design the expressive structure uh, because of sometimes they has a little bit confused about to make the structure and then the functionality of the structure, the cost, and all other and the function of the building. So uh, the question is how we can try to manage these kind of things to still have the very expressive structure. Okay, that's a great question. First of all, don't worry about cost. <laughs> <laughs> Because you are students. 
and this is the only time in your life that you don't have to worry about cost. So you must enjoy this time of your lives where you can experiment Now, regarding the main point of the question, I think, I think a good way to start and <coughs> have expressive structure, yet maintaining function and safety, is this. Do an initial design that meets the functional requirements of your building. And then ask yourself, how can I make transformations to make what I've designed more expressive? So, you know, you start with something like this that is regular and uh, probably rather boring. And then you ask yourself, what can I do to start to express my concept more effectively? And so maybe uh, you, will, you will shift some columns off a grip. Maybe you will shift, maybe you will introduce um, a rhythm in your column layout rather than boring um, A, B, oh sorry, A, 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 maybe you'll have A, A, B, A, B. You know, you will introduce some rhythm. Or maybe you will introduce texture. So, I would say, start with Something, start with a design where the function is working for you reasonably well and then you have to do transformations otherwise your architecture will be so boring and that's uh, and, so, and I mean all, all of our design is iterative isn't it we, we come up with some design ideas we do some sketches and we say, oh no, that's not working. And so we do it again and again. And so when we do it again and again, we're always trying to strengthen expressing our concept. Okay, uh, related to this uh, question, I think I have a, a question that uh, according to my uh, opinion or, or according to my experience as a lecturer, uh, mostly the student, uh, when, when, when they try to create something, mostly basically they want to create a form instead of structure. They try to create some kind of very uh, attractive form, but then they solve this problem only by using trust, because trust is the easiest way you can make the, uh, uh, for example, cross section like this, and then make it yes. very easy. Do you see uh, it is also the same based on your experience also? Or uh, what I what I like to, to introduce also to the student is try to create to, to design also the structure instead of just using trust because trust is the most easy way to, to solve this problem. What do you think? About well, that's right, and, and trust, the trust only works for the roof, doesn't it? Yes, I'm saying they also work for, for the... Oh, yeah, it could, it could become the wall as well. But, but what about the other intermediate floor levels? And so, yeah, the challenge is to... Um, if, if, you, if your design is being led by, say, an organic form, then your challenge is to have the structure, um, you know, be integrated with that form. And so, you know, maybe uh, your columns won't be on a grid. Maybe they will reflect the curvature of your form. Maybe your columns 
won't be circular, but they'll be more organic in their shape. Maybe your, your shear walls will be slightly curved. And so every um, detail of your structure yeah, should, should reinforce that, that form. And so yes, you don't need to use a truss. I mean, if, you, if you're wanting long spans, we more or less have to use trusses, don't we? If the spans are really long, well, trusses are sensible. But if your spans are not so long, you know, you could use curved concrete beams or curved steel beams. And that gives you um, other opportunities of, um, you know, integrating lighting with your design and so on. Another question? Oh, yes. Uh, good morning, Professor Andrews. Uh, my name is Anthony Derry, and I'm a third year architecture student. Uh, I want to ask, uh, in your lecture, you said that we can uh, create anything we want. Imagination is just our image, right? And, I'm sorry, uh, I'm just done. I want to ask how to create a border or how to differentiate between a design that is good or incredible between a design that is uh, what you call monstrosity because uh, as an architecture student uh, just like professor said we create things that are attractive but in, when we create the structure uh, we just make it uh, with every image that we know but uh, it's just hard to differentiate between design that is called good by other people and design that is called monstrosity in architecture uh, how do we know when to stop that's a very tough question. <laughs> uh, I think, I think, to help answer this question, we use precedence. What's the Bahasa Indonesian word for precedent? Precedent. <laughs> And so, I think that if you are wanting a very uh, unusual form, then you have to find some precedents to show your professors that it's possible. And you want to find precedents that are not monstrosities. And actually, in most of the architectural literature, uh, you will never get a monstrosity published. You know, because people are you're not interested in monstrosities, because they're awful, aren't they? So, um, I think the thing is for you to be guided by precedence, and, and, and when, you, when you are designing a very unusual building, a very unusual form, you look for precedents that are similar, and you examine the structure that's being used. And you be, be very critical of the structure, and, and just ask yourself, is this structure you know, reinforcing the form or not? And so I think um, I think we can learn a lot from precedents. Okay, and uh, that's what I think I'd encourage you to do. Any other questions? Still have time. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, uh, in the, according to the student, in the lecture, they are touched about the pro, uh, proportion, about the repetition, the rhythm. Of, uh, is it still? Uh, is, is, is it still relevant if we try to design the structure, which is sometimes? 
Cal State back then. Yeah, it's very relevant um, to decide the structure that's chaotic. If, if chaotic is appropriate for the building function and your uh, design concept, like for Daniel Leibskin, quite often he designs chaotic structure because it's, it's integrated in with his, his thinking. And like, for example, say you are designing um, an earthquake museum, say for Pada or John Jakarta, say, a new earthquake museum. You know, you, are, you, you might want some of the structure to express some of the chaos of the earthquake. Fantastic. You know, you would never want an earthquake museum to have boring structure. That would just be the opposite of your concept. And so you always are thinking about your concept and the qualities, the experiences of the users. And you, you design and detail your structure accordingly. But as I said, we must always um, together with that, provide strength to assist our earthquake forces in both directions. We must always do that. And then, if we've done that, we can be more free with the structure that just resists gravity loads. Okay. You got that question? Yeah. Good morning. Uh, I have two questions. Uh, first question is about the concept. Uh, we all know that chaos, instability, dynamic, and floating concept are very attractive. But can we find a beauty in the other concept like order, stability, static, or grounded? Can we make that boring concept more attractive? And my second question is uh, how can we predict uh, where the columns need to be placed at because I think it's a pretty complex problem because sometimes we need to design room or very usable space. How do we know it's stable enough? Very nice questions. Uh, remind me of the first question. Uh, no, oh yes, I, I remember, I remember. Yeah. That's a great question. How do we, say, say you've got a, um, say your concept is about expressing the strength of a building. How can you do that and not make the building boring? That, that's a great question. Well, what you do is, you, you, you perhaps begin by designing in your first design. Your, 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 your design is probably rather boring. Okay, that, that's fine. And so then you ask yourself, how can I make some design changes to start expressing strength? Okay. The first thing you might do is to change the shape or the size of some or all of your columns. You know, you might double the size of some, some columns so that, wow, they are so strong, you know? And you immediately read that as strength. Or you might put in some extra shear walls and so you make your building stronger than what you really need and the engineer will say to you don't be stupid you've got too much strength in that direction and you say i want those walls there 
because they are communicating strength. And so you might have an architecture of walls, strong walls. You know that they might be this high, this thick, and you look at them, you think, "Wow, they are so strong." You know, I feel so safe here. So you know, like that. And then about column placement, you can place columns wherever you want to. But the further apart you place them, the deeper the beams. So you can place your columns, like at that exhibition centre in Tokyo, the columns are the two columns are placed apart about a hundred metres. But the structure is about ten metres deep. But you know that's okay because it's up on the roof. So your column placement, as you, as you remind us, it must suit the function. Like, not like these columns, okay? And actually, I'm very critical of Le Corbusier. In my book, I, I criticize the con the, his convent at, um, I forget the name of the building, but it has columns like this. And the spaces are hopeless because the columns disturb the use of the, the rooms. So you can place the columns where you want to, but just remember that further apart, the beams get deeper. And also remember that if you want your columns to be part of a moment frame to resist earthquake forces, then your columns shouldn't be more than eight metres apart. And so if you want structure to resist earthquake, your columns must be quite close together to create a strong moment frame. But otherwise, your columns can be um, any distance apart. And, and they, they don't have to be on a grid. But You've got to have a very good reason for not putting them on a grid. You know, you've got to be able to, your tutor will say, that's no good, those columns are not on a grid. And so you've got to say uh, that the reason they're not on the grid is such and such. And give them the reason why, you know, you're, you've, you've made that decision. And, and Maybe you can show them a precedent, and, and they will be, hopefully, convinced. Uh, I have a last question, probably. Uh, it's also a comment. Uh, what I think that is were missed in your first book is uh, Density structure. Because I think density structure is a good example of instability, loading, and also a kind of uh, sense of structure, like in the new country. And the second, I think, is the movement structure. <laughs> uh, do you think of that two things in your next book? It's very nice. When um, you have a colleague who can be gently critical of you, it's very nice because it, it improves the quality of my work. You know, to have some suggestions like that. Um, the reason I didn't have ten secretary structures is because, generally speaking, they they aren't within the realm of architecture. Generally speaking, tensegrity structures don't help enclosure. They're more like standalone sculptures, things like that. Okay, but I agree with you. Um, if you were to provide a, a tensegrity structure, 
that would immediately um, create different readings. And as you say, of complexity, definitely. Because they're so hard to understand, aren't they? And so, um, you know, there, there might be some examples where you could use 10 secretly structures to support a form. But, but normally, in my experience, they're more, yeah, the sculptures. Uh, regarding bamboo structures, um, I do apologise. <laughs> Because I, I think bamboo structures are fantastic. Um, and the only reason I haven't included any is because there's so few examples published by English speaking books. You know? But I mean, it would be great if, if you or your students could give examples of these. You know, and build on my work. I mean, my work is just to hear. Now your duty is to extend it and enlarge it. Thanks. Thank you very much. Uh, okay, if there is no... Uh, oh, yeah. Okay, so, um, sir, I uh, thank you. First of all, I would like to say thank you about the outstanding presentation that uh, has been given to us about the new concept in architecture, especially. And, um, okay, so I really inspired about one of the concepts, which is, uh, is that about the soft and hard uh, concept, and also the lightweight and heavyweight material. And um, there's still one thing that I need to know about, uh, yeah, for about the tips for us, is that which one should we prefer uh, first? Is that we have to create the form first or the structure first? Because we believe that um, if we create the form, that uh, it's, it's really uh, difficult in, uh, to connect the structure at the end of the day. So yeah, uh, it's very hard to uh, you know making decisions just uh, form first or the structure first to in order to achieve the good uh, project at the end of the day. Okay, so thank you, sir. another very good question. I think, I think most architects start with form first. Uh, because I, I think you have to start with form. Because form includes uh, a sense of um, volume and area and function. It doesn't make sense to start with structure, actually. Because the structure is always the servant of the form and of your design concept. So the structure is usually, as I say, the servant of the form and the function. And like the structure should enhance the function shouldn't um, detract or be negative towards the function. And so I think you, you start with the form, but as soon as you are thinking about the form and function, at the same time, you must be thinking about the structure. You must bring these things together, you know, from the Form will always start, but, but very soon after, the structure, you're, you must be thinking about the structure as well. Like a couple of years ago, I was in India um, giving guest lectures, and, and there were students just like you. They were, had a design project of a 20 story apartment building. And they'd all done these amazing interior layouts of the apartments of, this, of these 20 story buildings. But they, there was no structure. And I mean, if you're designing a 20 story building, your columns are never going to be smaller than that, are they? 
And so they had all their layouts of these apartments. But once you started putting these massive columns in, the whole architecture is destroyed. You know, it, was, it made me really sad that they didn't realise that the form and the structure have to come through together. Otherwise, if you leave your structure too late, the structural engineer will come along and give you a horrible structure that doesn't integrate with your architecture. So you have to provide the leadership with structural suggestions to the structural engineers so that the structure yeah, will enrich your concepts. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah, Andrew, uh, two, two more. Yeah, and Andrew first. Uh, good morning, everyone. And I, will, I have a question about how the way you uh, doing the research in the structure. So, uh, how do you choose? Uh, how do you classify your example uh, in this presentation? Like, why you choose this? instead of uh, put it in the center like something like that and how we how we know this is a good example or not like maybe it's related to uh, your conditions to us to find a good uh, a presence so if you find a similarity of the presence in our concept but uh, you don't know uh, how to judge if it's a good one or it's a bad one or uh, it's uh, it's a little like only some a gimmick of attractiveness. So it's not a uh, some architect uh, architect says to give a like an honesty in structure or uh, maybe only make fun of the structure. So maybe it's, uh, that's the question. Thank you. First of all, uh, in my book, I make it very clear that my analysis is very subjective. And you raise a good point because some buildings, some structures, I'll start again, some people might read a structure as chaotic and other people might read the structure as dynamic. And actually, there is no strong, there's no right or wrong. Because each of us, we read things from our own viewpoint. We can't, we can't avoid that. And so you have to use your viewpoint. And you, you're entitled to disagree with me. Like some of my examples of chaos, they might be better in instability. And so we would have, everybody has their different opinions. And this is one of the richnesses of architecture, isn't it? You know, we all do different readings of architecture. I mean, some architects might love these columns. Others will hate them, won't they? Because we all have our different philosophies, our different approaches to architecture. And so we each have to just be um, confident about our own opinions. And, and when you're a student, that's where you need your tutors. To, like you will design something and you will say to the tutor, I'm intending uh, this structure to express playfulness. Do you agree with this? And you get your tutor's opinion, you know? 
And so when we are learning, we, we have to ask other opinions. You ask your friends. You say to your friend, look, I'm trying to design a very grounded building here. Do you think I'm achieving it or not? Or have I just achieved a boring building? You ask your colleagues, you know, and think about their replies. And then you insert your, you make the decision based on your opinion. I think it works like that. Okay, maybe the last question. Main difference. Well, it's really well. First of all, uh, we have a different building culture. We use a lot of precast concrete, uh, and since the Christchurch earthquake in 2012. We're using a lot more steel structure because many of our concrete structures did not perform very well. And, um, but I think the main difference is in, in the quality of our buildings. In New Zealand, we have quite good QA for the design and construction process, whereas in Indonesia, I don't believe it is very good. And actually, in Bandung, I have seen a number of buildings under construction that are very unsafe. <coughs> you know, you go to a doctor, and the doctor can just have a quick look at you and say, Ah, I know what's wrong with you. Or so an experienced structural engineer can go onto a building site and think, I can just walk on the pavement and I can look at the reinforcing steel and I know if it's dangerous or not. And it's really sad that your construction system is letting you down really unsafe buildings are still being built in Bandung. And when the Lem Bang Fault ruptures, these buildings will collapse. And so in Indonesia, it's a huge challenge for you to start to apply... I mean, these buildings they don't comply with the Indonesian code. That's why they're unsafe. It's not because I'm saying it. It's because the code, your own code, is not being followed. And so there's a real challenge for you young people to get into the industry and to start to make sure Buildings are safe against earthquake. It doesn't cost much more. So that's the main difference. Okay. Thank you very much, Professor.